So in the previous chapter, we were talking about arc parse and how it could help us. So let's start by taking a look at what we've built so far. We can then do something like this and it will parse the argument for us, but it's not really doing much extra and we want to have a little bit nicer functionality. So we're going to replace import sys with import arg parse. And so now you start to see that we are going to need to replace this line as well. So let's get rid of that for a second and let's replace it with something like this. And you'll see that this now is a call to a constructor. This arg parse package, it contains this class that we are constructing. And it takes a few things as arguments, but we'll just be passing one for starters. This is going to be the name that gets shown, the description that gets shown the Achilles HTML vulnerability analyzer version 1.0. So this will be kind of the standard message that describes everything that passes through our script. So now we have this parser that we've instantiated and we can add a couple things to it. So we can add an argument for version and the way that we do this is we provide these symbols, so dash v and dash dash version, these strings, uh, these represent what exactly people will pass in in order to trigger the following action. And the action is version. And this is something that's built into the library. And this is what I was talking about. This is one of the nice things that's built in. We can use the syntax to reference the actual name of the application. And here we go. So now we just say Sorry about that. There we go, parser.parseargs. So args is now being given to us by parser doing parse args. But before it does that, there is one kind of argument that it will perform some special functionality for. So let's take a look at how that works. So if we just call it, we'll see it does nothing. And then if we call it, this way we'll see that it outputs the version and if we call it this way we'll see it does the same thing but then if we do something like this we'll see that it still works and then if we do this we'll see it still works and we'll see that this breaks it and so what this is showing us is that it's pretty flexible but it does treat those shorthand flags in a special way. So here, the option flags, it's more flexible with, but this one, it expects to have a very concise syntax. And so you see that it says usage, achilles.py, and then dash h or dash v. So dash v is the one we provided, and then dash h, all it does is it prints this nifty little usage menu. And this is something we did not have to program. We just get it for free by using this tool. And it shows us this usage menu here, which is pretty nice. And so for free, essentially, we got something that's making this look like a real tool that you would download from somewhere and start using. And uh, so if we do this, We'll see it also prints this out. So now we can add another argument here, and this is going to be something more relevant to our application than this uh, general purpose version one. And it'll be URL. This will be the URL that we take in, 
and uh, that's the one where we'll try to get the HTML document to analyze. And so here we go, we are going to add what type it is. It's going to be a string once we get it from the command line and the help message that usage will print for this and we'll see that in a second. So now we try this again. You'll see that now it says that the usage has Achilles.py and then optional parameters and then we did not say that this is optional so now it shows up as a required one here URL, right? And then it gives us our description and then it says positional arguments URL the URL of the HTML to analyze. And so since we are not passing it in, um, it doesn't really let us do much more. But then here we go. You'll see that it is now complaining. It says the following arguments are required. URL. So we've already made some progress. So next, we are going to take a look at passing in the URL and then actually doing more with the URL than just taking it off of the command line. And that will be the next step in building this tool.